the Gantt view inside of monday.com. Arguably one of the most useful features in the system. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly what it is and how to use it. Now, just before we get into the video, if you need any help with monday.com training or setup, check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. So as you can see here, we are on our monday.com board. This is an example board for this video. I've added a few useful columns. So we've got a timeline column and a dependent on column or dependency column, which I'll come on to later on in this video. But firstly, let's go ahead and add a Gantt view. So if we go up to the top here and press the, press the add view button, you may see the Gantt view option here. If not, go to more views and use the search up the top left hand corner and just search Gantt, press open in board. Now, as you can see here, this is the Gantt view. This is how the data is populated. You can see we have a start date and an end date, um, and it's grouped by different things, which of course we can adjust and I'll come on to in this video. But this is an absolutely amazing tool for managing projects, managing campaigns, managing events, there are a whole host of different use cases that you could apply the Gantt view to for your organization. And it gets even more functional and useful when you use the dependency column as well, which again, I will come on to later on in this video. But firstly, let's go through the absolute basics of just adjusting the Gantt view to suit your preferences and how you'd like to view the information available to you. So if you go to the cog up the top right hand corner here, we've got this settings option, as you can see, go ahead and select this. Um, and I'm gonna work through these different options. So first and foremost, we get to dictate which column is displayed or which date column is displayed on our Gantt view. So if you have lots of date columns or, or timeline columns, you may not want all of them to be put on the Gantt view. So we can adjust accordingly. So as you can see here, this sub items date column from our board is actually being applied to this Gantt view. Not that there is any date information on sub items at the moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and untick that. We've also got the two different columns on our board, the date column and the timeline column. If you've got multiple timeline columns, they will all appear here. If you've got multiple date columns, they will all appear here as well, okay? So at the moment, I've just got timeline. You can add the date column as well. So if I go back to the main table, you can see here that we've got 9th of July, 20th, 9th and 15th of July. If I go back to the Gantt view, you can see that that is represented here. Now, I would always and strongly recommend using the timeline view only. Um, the reason being is if you are using, let's say, a start date column, uh, date column and then an end date date column, you will have the start date and the end date, but you won't have that line in the middle, as you can see here, which is what you would have with a timeline. So you have a start date for a timeline and an end date, but you can see the movement throughout or the length of the project, and that is displayed on the Gantt view here. So I would always use the timeline view. Um, you, there are, of course, instances where the date column might be applicable. But like I said, I would always use the timeline column, okay? So now we've selected the timeline column that's being displayed on our Gantt view. We can then choose what we wanna group it by. So if we go to group by, and we're, at the moment it's being grouped by group, okay? So if I go to the main table, you can see we've got one item or two items in the to-do and one item in the completed that contain data in the timeline view. FYI, if there is no data in the timeline view, it will obviously not be shown on the Gantt view. Um, I have made that mistake in the past, so just bear that in mind and got very confused. And so as you can see, we've got two in the to-do list that contain data and one in the completed, and that is of course being represented on our Gantt view here. But like I said, this can be changed. So we can change it to board if you've got multiple boards being pulled into one Gantt view. We change it to sub items, person, status is a really common one so if we select status this will then show um, the items grouped by status as you can see i personally like the to group the the items by group i think that's a very useful way of looking at things but again it's entirely up to you and whatever your preferences are what's going to be most suitable for the project that you're managing so now we've selected group we can then go ahead and label by so you can see here that this is the label. We've got example item number one, example item number two. We can change this to let's say the owner of that particular item if there is one. Status if you'd like to, loads of options. Again, I like the name option. I think this is useful, but there are definitely use cases where you may wanna change this. Maybe having status is gonna be helpful. I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's very useful to have this information and be able to adjust it. It ensures that the information that you need to see is readily available as soon as you log into your system. And then we've got some view settings. So we can show dependencies, yes or no. I'll come on to this later on in the video. So I'm gonna leave this ticked for the time being. We've got show group summary. If you unselect this, this will remove that summary up the top. Again, I think that is really, really helpful to have. 
We've got show today indication. If you untick this, that will get rid of that line, that blue line that shows the day of the day that you are working on. We've got show weekends. So if I change this view from the week's view to the day's view, uh, you can see here it is Monday today. So Saturday and Sunday. If I untick show weekends, it just goes Friday to Monday. And then we've got show color legend down the bottom here. So this will show you completed and to do again, entirely up to you if you'd like this information available, but it's good to be able to select the options. And then we've got set work days. So if you work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and have Sunday and Monday off, you can then dictate that in the system. So you can change that accordingly. Okay. Another very, very helpful feature, especially if you're running events or campaigns or you're doing something that's slightly different. And then we have the critical path. Now this doesn't require, but it's definitely complemented by the dependency column. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just head back to my main table. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the dependency column, got no idea how to use it, check out this video links above that we have done um, that explains exactly how to use it. But what it essentially means is item two is dependent on the changes of item one, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna make item two dependent on item one, and then I'm gonna make item three dependent on item two, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll head back to our Gantt view, um, and then I'm gonna press show critical path, okay? So just before I do, I'm actually gonna, just gonna press auto fit. And you can see now that these are linked to one another and depending on the way you've set up your dependency column, the behaviors based on the change of one will represent the change of another. Um, but I'll come on to that in a moment's time. That may sound slightly confusing. But if I go ahead and press show critical path, that will show you the path associated with one another in order to get to completion. So if you've got loads and loads and loads of items on a board, this will then show you the critical path for each of those projects, let's say. So you might have 80 projects on one Gantt view, and then you just wanna show the critical path for each project, and there are gonna be loads of items associated with each project. This will show you the critical path to get that completed. And it will look a bit weird when you've got loads and loads of items, but it is actually really, really useful. So you can choose to show that or hide that. If you're not using the dependency column, it will just highlight one as red. So they'll be red as one um, as opposed to connected like they were there. So you, you can see that. Um, so that's a critical path, very, very useful, especially when you've got lots of information on a Gantt view. Um, we then have baselines. This is another unbelievably useful feature. So as we all know, projects do get delayed. Unfortunately, it does happen. What you can do is you can create a baseline and this will then allow you to see how far off your project has gone. So if I go ahead and press add new snapshot, now just bear in mind, if you do select this option, it's gonna create two new columns on your main table board. Um, and I'll show you in a moment what that looks like. So if you go ahead and press add new snapshot, that will take a snapshot of what the timelines currently look like at the moment you took the snapshot photo, let's say. And if we then go ahead and adjust the example items or just one of them, change the date, you can see that that will adjust accordingly, but now go into red, but we can see our baseline. So we can see how far off we are. If we then move the project back or to suggest that we're early in completing the project, it will remain green. If we are still on baseline, so within the dates that the snapshot was taken, it will remain green. But as soon as we start adjusting to make the project completion later than when the snapshot was you can see here that it changes the color to red but what i really like is you can see when it originally started so when the plan was and what the actual is as well um, and you can take multiple snapshots so you can do this over an extended period of time to see how, how how positive how well the project has gone or potentially how bad the project has been as well how late you are to completing it we can go ahead and unselect these baselines. We can hide them if we want to and show them whenever it's useful. I'm just gonna move this back. Um, so you can, like I said, you can have as many as you like, really, really helpful. You can choose to hide and show them when you need to see how your um, projects are performing. Um, this will also, by the way, take a snapshot of every single item on your Gantt view. So if you've got loads and loads and loads, you can then see how all of your projects are performing across this one Gantt view. Very, very helpful. If we just head back to the main table, you can see that there's two new columns that have been created. 
a baseline that is locked and a difference which is a formula column um, and this just calculates the baseline the difference between the two and it will then dictate on the Gantt view whether it's going to be red or green um, if I just refresh this page for whatever reason the um, the, the dependency column is glitched out monday.com um, but if I go ahead and go back to settings that's now the baseline very very helpful if we then go to color by we can then color by group or status or whatever else um, what color by means is literally the color of each item so if I color it by status you see green red yellow that obviously represents our different status options and whatever status options the colors may be will be colored by be represented on there so helpful for managing things and just knowing what's going on um, and then we can select choose group so if you don't want the completed group to actually be shown on the Gantt view because it's been completed it's no longer necessary then you can go ahead and unselect that accordingly um, and or just choose to show it entirely up to you so that brings me on nicely to the dependency column stuff. I did demonstrate that for the baseline, but when you've got a dependency column set up and you've got different items dependent on one another, when you adjust one item, the entire project will adjust. So when I would be setting up a dependency column is let's say there are loads of different things that need to be done for one project, but they're all dependent on one another. So one person can't start until the other person has completed their job. You would use a dependency column view that in the Gantt view and then if I let's say needed to change the completion date from the 11th to the 12th of July that will then update the others as well so you could then see the performance now like I've already said this is going to vary based on how you have set up your dependency column which I will go over in that tutorial that was linked above so very very useful I really really like how these lines kind of connect to one another um, and especially especially useful when you've got loads of items on a Gantt view and you can see exactly what's connected to one another so you don't get overly confused or overwhelmed by all of these items and then like I said when you adjust one it will adjust the others as well and then you can go ahead and go to your settings go back to baseline show baseline and see exactly where you are for that project so yeah, as you can see I've adjusted it so many times now we are well ahead of the deadline or the initial project completion plan now a few final things that I want to go over is we've got the zoom in and zoom out button up top here. We've got this is very standard calendar stuff by the way. We've got days, weeks, months, quarters and years. So if I just want to view it in years, if I want to view it in quarters, months, so on and so forth. Days is very, very useful. Now you can go ahead and press auto fit. So that will adjust this accordingly and try and show you as much information on your Gantt view as possible. We've also got this button on the left hand side which is just take you to today. Um, so that will just take you to the day that you are looking at the Gantt view. I'm sure you are familiar. You can hide and show the baselines from here or click into the baselines and then press hide or show from that button there. Very, very helpful. Um, and then we've just got some really standard monday.com stuff like the filters, the person, the search. Um, and you can add additional widgets if you plan on undocking this particular view. But I think the Gantt view is unbelievably helpful. Hopefully this has explained how to use it. Hopefully you can think of a few use cases where um, you apply the Gantt view and also use the dependency column and they work in tandem with one another, which will hopefully make managing projects or events or campaigns or whatever it be a lot, lot easier. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.